In this particular syllabus overview, we're going to go into both paper pencil packets and projects since there's a lot of overlap between those two items. Now remember these are worth a lot of your grade. Um, for example, in the spring 2017 syllabus, they're worth 42% of your grade collectively, 30% for the paper pencil packets, 12% for the projects. And those percentages might be tweaked for whatever semester you're looking at, but they're going to be worth quite a bit. So let's talk about how you work on these and how you submit them. So for the paper pencil packets, they are exactly what they sound. They are packets that you are going to print off and do yourself with pen or pencil onto paper. So where do you find them? Well, you'll go to my stat lab and you download the file by clicking on course tools and then document sharing and selecting the packet you're interested in. And then you print the file. So for example, I clicked here under um, course tools here. Let me go back to the main menu. You click on course tools, document sharing, and different categories will show up. So for example, project number one is underneath computer project number one. You'll click on that to print that when we get to the projects. Um, paper pencil packet number one is right here. So you click on that paper pencil packet number one. So there it is. And I actually have the file already loaded right here. Some of them I don't have loaded, say, um, this particular semester that I'm working on this video. I don't have number two loaded because I want to edit it. So it's not available yet, but it will get edited and posted. And once it's posted, then students can print it off. So I click on paper pencil packet number one. Then you click on this link and it will open up paper pencil packet number one. This particular one this semester is 12 pages. So a student's going to print these 12 pages and they're going to complete these problems. They're going to show all work, give all explanations, all of that stuff, um, circle answers, write down compute calculator entries. So what did you type into your calculator to get this result? That kind of thing. Um, sometimes things don't require any work, but when they do, you're expected to give it. When you're ex asked to explain, you should be explaining yourself. Um, all of that good stuff in order to get full credit. So you print that file, you work on that file. Remember that everything that you do must be complete and legible in order to receive full credit. If I can't read it, I can't give you credit for it. You want to write cleanly and clearly. You want to erase any mistakes or white out those mistakes so that they don't make a mess. Um, you want, if you're going to scan the documents, you're going to take pictures of them with your phone or run them through a scanner and submit them electronically, which is fine. It's an online course. If you want to submit them electronically, great. Make sure, I would recommend working in pen with whiteout so that way it shows up really nicely or just make sure you're working with a dark pencil and pressing because light pencils can sometimes be really faded and you don't want to lose credit and get no credit because I couldn't read it, right? So make sure it's not too faint and it's not too messy. So it's got to be legible and um, complete so that I can give you credit. You don't type the packets. They are written by hand by you. Of course, if you need an accommodation because let's say you, know, um, you have broken hands or something like that, well then get a hold of me and we can, we can work something out. But in general, you are going to be writing on these just like you would on an exam. They're sort of practice for those exams and they're worth almost as much points wise in the course. You're going to show all your work. You're going to give calculator entries. And of course, you're going to use the calculator for calculations. We're not doing this stuff by hand per se. We're using the calculator to kind of get us through that portion of it. But you want to fill it out, show all your work, give your calculator entries, etc. Then you're going to submit that document for points. Now the packets will get graded. I will print them out myself as a matter of fact. So I'll print them and I will grade them writing on them, usually with red pens. That way it shows up nice and brightly for you. And then I will scan them, a color scan and email it back to you approximately one week after you submitted it because it takes a while to grade these things. And then you will have that scan to work from. So you can see things I marked wrong and try to figure them out. You can go meet with your tutor. You can come talk to me. Um, sometimes I'll write little notes to kind of explain a little bit. Sometimes I won't because I want you to try to figure out what you're doing wrong. You're trying to learn from this. And so by my grading it and giving it back to you, I'm giving you your feedback. Um, and I often don't want to tell you what the right answer was. I want you to figure it out because I'm not going to be telling you the right answers on the exams either. So you have to be able to learn the material. So the 
paper pencil packets and the projects um, are not just about me grading them, but they're also a way for you to learn. And the paper pencil packets will be given back to you graded. Now, how do you submit these packets? Well, you submit them one of two ways. You can scan them and upload them. If you upload them, you will upload them to the same category area that you, under document sharing, that you downloaded it from. Um, remember that your scans must be legible, not too faint. Use pen and whiteout in order to receive full credit. Remember that it must be a single PDF file. You don't submit 10 different JPEG files or 12 different JPEG files. You submit one file that is a PDF file. Now, if your scanner, a um, couple things. One, if you have a smartphone that with a halfway decent camera, which all of the ones made in the last couple years do, then there are actually free phone apps that will take pictures and turn them into PDF scans. Um, Cam Scanner is one, Genius Scan is another. Um, there are various others. If you just look up on your app store or whatever, or, or iTunes store, um, PDF scan, you'll find them find one that works for you. Um, if you take JPEG files, which is what most uh, phones take pictures like or scanners take pictures of, it's more like a picture format. JPEG is a picture format, not a document format. Then you can put them all onto your computer and use a site like JPEG to PDF. It will actually convert the, all the JPEGs to PDFs for you. So you can do that. If it makes multiple PDFs, then you can merge them all together because it has to be one single file. I need to be able to click on the file that is for Suzy Q student and it will have that document. Um, remember that I have to print them off so it has to be legible. Um, be sure to submit it into the correct category area because I'm going to be downloading all sorts of things and I batch download from all students at the same time. So if you want paper pencil packet, you want to be in document sharing and you can see there's a little arrow and paper pencil packet number one is a little bit darker and farther over to the right. That means that I'm in that category and you can see it down below where that paper pencil packet number one is in that gray bar. So that means that I want to, if you're a student, you would click upload a document and I want it for the instructor only, of course, not sharing to the entire class. I don't want to run amok of the academic honesty policy and lose all credit. That would be bad. So you go click on choose file. And I'm just going to make up a file. I'm going to pretend like this is my file, which it's not, but I'm going to pretend. Now you want to make sure actually you have your file, your name in your file name, because I download a lot of student files all at once in a batch. So if you're a Suzy Q student, you want to say, you know, Suzy Q pro or packet one or Suzy Q packet two, or, you know, John Doe project one, that kind of thing. You want to have your name in there and then you want it to have files. The other thing is that it can't have any symbols. So if I, if I download this project, when I saved it, it has to be just names and that's it. There can't be any, um, how to put this, any symbols in there of any kind. So I don't even know if it's going to like the parentheses symbol, to be honest. Let me try this and see if it'll let me do it. And I'll say project, oh, sorry, packet one. I just picked a PDF file at random just to add it in and see if it would work. Yes, it worked. Okay. So it, it took the parentheses symbols. Okay. But it will not take the pound sign, the hashtag symbol, just for the record. So I know you're tempted to write, you know, packet number one, do not do it because if you do, it will not upload, which is one of the, this warning right here that I give you though, this symbol right here, that one is not good. That hashtag sign, dollar signs, percentage signs, any of that stuff, it will not upload it. It will give you an error and you will write me frustrated emails at 11 o'clock at night saying my math lab's broken. Blah, blah, blah. Not my math lab's broken. <laughs> You're broken. You've got to remember to follow those instructions. Do not put dollar signs, hashtag signs, number pound signs in there at all, right? It can, should be your name. It should be like, um, John Doe packet one or, you know, Suzy Q packet two, you know, that kind of thing. That's what it should have as your file name. All right. Now that's if you want to submit it online. Well, of course, if you live far away, that's how you're going to be submitting it, right? You're going to submit it that way. 
there is another option to submit physical originals. So you can, if you're around campus, I'm around a lot, you can come in and meet me in my office hours, say hi, ask me some questions, give it to me then. If I'm not around in my office, you could just shove it under my door. If you're around on campus on a time I'm not around, feel free to just shove it under my door. Um, Make sure, of course, that you have all your pages there and they're in the correct order. And that's true of the scans, to be fair. I've had people send me scans where pages are missing. So be warned of that. That is not a good thing, right? So um, just putting that out there. So be sure to have all your pages and have them all in order because you don't like missing 40 points out of 100 because you, you forgot two pages. Um, the other option besides just meeting with me in my office or um, during office hours or if I'm not there. Um, you can shove it under my door. You can actually go to the other campuses. I have a lot of students that live close to Lenaway or Hillsdale campus. You can just go drive into campus and give it to the office staff and they will actually scan it and let you keep the original and just send me an email of the scan. And that's perfectly fine. That's great. Matter of fact, they'll even do that for you on central campus. If you go to the library or something, they can sometimes scan them and just email it to me and you get to keep the original. Wonderful. Great. So the office staff um, can do that. They just must timestamp them or, or email me in such a way that I know that you turned it in on time. That's all. So those are how you're going to submit it. You're either going to email it or, excuse me, not email it, upload it yourself. Do not email them to me. Upload them here under document sharing. Remember, it has to be a single PDF file. Right? If you need to merge it, go to PDF merge. If you need to turn a JPEG to a PDF, then do so. But it's your job to turn it a single PDF file. And again, most modern smartphones can do um, this for free for you with Cam Scanner and Genius Scan. Or you can come into Central Campus or any of the other campuses. They will either scan them for you at the other campuses or Central Campus, you can submit it to me. Now the projects are kind of the same thing. <laughs> Pro the projects get submitted the same way. Well, project two does. Project number two is submitted the exact same way. It's just like the paper pencil packets because project number two is a lot like a paper pencil packet, but it's one where you have to gather your own data. So it would be a PDF document that you print off, fill all this out. You have to um, do a little bit of work in Excel and um, submit some photos. Notice there's some photos to submit here and you can do that under document sharing. So there's two photos you'll have to submit or one photo of some candy that you bought to do your project with and you would just take a picture and that can be a JPEG file and you would just upload that picture by clicking upload when you're in the project number two area. Project number one is the one that's a little bit different. Project number one is a computer project that's done in Excel. So you would submit the Excel file and that everybody does electronically. Nobody brings in any physical copy because it's an Excel file. So you upload document when you're in computer project number one. Of course, you would only submit to the instructor, not the entire class. And you would submit, I'm just going to make something up. Um, oh, here's an Excel file. It's actually the instructor key for project two. And I would click on that file, make sure it has none of those pound signs or any of those weird symbols in there and make sure it has your name on it. So it should be, you know, John Doe project two, you know, or whatever, or actually this is project one press project one is an Excel file. And then it's there and it's for the instructor only, right? So if you see it in here, then that's for the instructor. So it's an Excel file, so or an Excel file, um, and that's the way that one gets submitted. So project number one is only an Excel file, only submitted there. Project number two is a little bit more complicated. You submit, um, an, you can submit an Excel file and the paper pencil portion of it together in one, or you can do a couple different files. You could submit for project number two, you can submit both the Excel file and the paper pencil portion of it. Um, that's fine with me. All right, so let's see what else did I say here. So of course, these projects are um, about thinking critically, applying what we've learned to a real world situation, 
So you're going to have to gather some messy data sets from the web in a particular fashion and wrangle with them a little bit. You're going to learn some Excel and I have, I'm going to have some video tutorials for you to follow along with that. So it's some good old fashioned thinking about these ideas and writing about them. Um, they must be done entirely by you. They, these ones you cannot get tutor help with. Now you can with the paper pencil packets. The tutors can help with those, no problem. But the two projects must be yours. They're like take home exams. So they cannot be done in part by anybody else. You can work together as in talking to each other, asking questions on the discussion boards, that's wonderful. But you must do it all yourself. You cannot share Excel files. You have to do it all on your own. All right, I think we are done with that. Um, I will meet you back here to talk about exams now that we're done talking about packets and projects. And remember to post any questions you may have on the discussion boards. That's what they're for.